we're going to get going here. So, so um, tonight um, I'm going to talk about connectivity, and uh, we'll get going with that in just a moment. But uh, there has been, um, and this is a this is a tough webinar to do because I want to talk about the relationship that we have with a patient. And that's a relationship that's, that's difficult to verbalize, and I'm going to try to do that tonight to some extent. But, you know, when you're in the moment of adjusting people, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into this, and I, and I hope you get to get into these places because I never used to be able to get there. And now I can be there most of the time, you know, if not 100% of the time, is this, this place where you really do focus on the smallest things in somebody else's world. And when you can clear yourself to be able to be in that space and hold that energy um, and to be able to truly know that, that you could change somebody's life and you're changing their life, um, it, it's, it's profound, profound. I had five moments in my office this week where I had a, I had a touching moment with with my patient, you know, that it was, I mean, so what I'm going to talk about tonight is a place that, you know, we're going to work on at the conference and we're going to work on this stuff, but it, it's it's a special, special place that I can only verbalize to you. It is It is really, it's my one of the few places besides being with my wife that I have really um, just a really nice piece and I'm a, and I'm a nut. So um, this is a really special place for me and it took me to get through the biomechanics and the mechanics. I mean, just think of that word, the mechanics. That's not what connectivity is. It's the antithesis of it. It's the opposite. It's the other piece. It's the yin of the yang, you know, and without those two, you can't have completion. So um, we worked really hard at getting through the other stuff, which we'll talk about in just a moment as well. Just kind of a little summarize of what we do. But tonight is a um, is, is a space of, you know, using an instrument or, um, you know, somebody said to me, you know, um, you know, what's with the guys that twist their necks and, and use, use instruments? And I said, you know, I have a, um, when I work on somebody, I used to tell people to please be quiet so I could pay attention. Now I ask them to please be quiet so I can enjoy what's happening. enjoy what's happening. And that's a really special place because it's a place that I've never been able to have where I was. And, you know, all of us come through a perspective in time and over time. And I come from a medical model and I, and I see my evolution. I see an evolution where I grew up in a medical family. So I got to go through that. See, see the universe wants to make sure you get to have every experience possible because otherwise you can't be everything possible. <laughs> so you have to go through this physical medical model where if I showed my father this, who was a veterinarian, but let's imagine this was a dog, and I showed him this, he would say, well, that is a scoliosis. And that is what is, he, that's what he sees. That is a scoliosis. All right. And whatever they would do for that, they have a name for it. And that's what we, that's what we do. You know, I mean, it, it, somebody would, wouldn't take this x-ray and probably wouldn't say anything else. If something was broken or there was a tumor or a separation, they would point that out. Okay. So, so I grew up in a scenario where I was labeling things and saying, okay, this is this and this is that. And when I came to chiropractic school, that changed. That changed in a way because we started talking about there's a life force that lives in this thing. And I thought that was really freaking cool. Okay. As a matter of fact, it changed my life so profoundly <laughs> that it's this subject that I could talk to you about tonight on Rosh Hashanah. Okay. So um, 
but <laughs> and and just as a you know a spiritual side note, Rosh Hashanah is tonight, and it's a Jewish holiday. It's an Old Testament holiday, and you know the Jews are pretty good at counting stuff. You know, they count a lot of stuff. You people may say they count money, but they're, they're good mathematicians. You know, um, they're detailed people, and they've been counting the way that the moon and the planets have been organized since the beginning of beginning. Okay, and tonight energetically is Rosh Hashanah, where God blew the spirit of himself into man. And that's cool because that's what we're going to talk about connecting to tonight. Okay, so I got I got turned on to something else in chiropractic and, you know, and it was the spiritual aspect of the human body. And, you know, what was so funny is because I'm such a detailed person in a way, I'm a mechanic, you know, my brain works in a machine way, at least it did at one point. I pursued trying to understand this with techniques that measured this, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a detail that is, in, that is considered large in the chiropractic profession. Okay. And I, and I, and I mastered those, those techniques. And I got to a place where I realized that there was more to the body than the space that I was looking at because measuring something and saying, Hey, this is here and this is there. And it's done throughout chiropractic. You can measure a temperature. You can measure a leg length. You can measure an angle. You can measure a wedge. You can measure a, um, a bone out of place to, you know, with whatever uh, way that you do that. Okay. But that is no different than the expression I realized that I was doing as my father is a veterinarian and in medicine, is he would look at this as scoliosis and a chiropractor would look at this and say, hey, this is a X and this thing is X, A, B, C, D, half of this and three quarters of that and throw in a couple of these, okay? And uh, I've come to realize where I stand today that that is, that is, uh, that is all true, <laughs> but there's a lot more than that. Okay. There's, it's not that that's not true. It's that, you know, that's, that's the foundation of the, of the human body. So what, where I've come is to try to create a, um, and not, I've, I've never, I didn't even realize this would occur because I was just trying to how to do a better job. And I thought that would just take me where I was, but just to, a more information is take me completely out of that place to see the whole place, to come back to that place and see it in full circle. So I have a global perspective now of looking at this as well as most of you here on here. I can't see who you are, you know, for the most part, but Hello. you know, most of the people on here probably can look at this and realize that this is not just a low left shoulder. It's just not a left low hip. It's just not a bend and a wedge and an, and an osteoarthritis here, there, and everything else. It's a human body that's been traumatized, it's in distress, and we have an expression in QSM3 unlike anywhere else in any other profession that has been able to create a language and a flow that can look at this and say, hey, um, I have a good understanding to some, to some level, you know, I don't know where we stand tomorrow, but, uh, you know, we can have a conversation of what's going on here, Okay. And, and that's cool. So we've gone through this long perspective, this long path of measuring stuff, looking for a, 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 a way to measure stuff, to come to a place that we look at things in a very different way, and we look at innate intelligence. And over the past year, it just dawned on me is like, why am I searching for the big places? Why don't I just look at what is in front of me and realize what's going on? So I started looking at the way that the manufacturer made things and the way things should be. And I, and I realized that the frontal plane should be straight and that's nice and stable when it's like that. And all these wires up here, <clears throat> all these wires up here, we see them in the, in the traps. We see them in the lats. If you look at the muscle system, it's just one, one triangle after another. That's basically a, um, a wire from the main post called the spine okay, from head to toe down to basically and tying it down to basically four major points, okay? You have an arch in the middle cervicals, 
and you have an arch over here, okay? You got an arch in the front and an arch in the back, okay? So you've got you know, a few arches through here. Those are all going to be strong points. Same with the shoulders. I call that earth. I call the pelvis earth also, okay? Earth is the where the things ground into. So the muscle system roots into the pelvis. Look how the massive muscle system is. We think it's because, you know, we saw some nice butt cheeks, but it's that root system that is massive that holds up everything else. And then there's a secondary platform, another earth, that these muscles, and you can see them even on the film, they, they tie right in, okay? So we can look at those areas and try to understand how the system works, and there is a frontal support system that should be straight, and then there's a three-curved um, sagittal system that gives us flexibility. Freaking think about it. It just blows me away. I just cannot stop thinking about that. We have this flexible, stable system. It's so cool, you know? So this is something that we want to try to be able to get back to, okay? And I call that sustainability, where the human body has a place that it says, hey, man, I can handle that. You know, if you had a 50-pound suitcase and you're standing on one leg hanging over a train track, you're not going to do too well if you had that 50 pounds standing on two legs. Well, what happens if you made that to five pounds and three pounds? So there's a place where the human body and every human being is different energetically that can support itself. And we have a postural listing that expresses itself that way. So we look at the human body, okay, and realize that it is in kind of an organized chaos. Chaos. What's the chaos? The chaos is what you've done to it, okay, and the organization is what it's trying to do to combat that. That's the organized chaos, <laughs> you know? So it tries to take care of that and take care of you, and it gets tired, and it starts compressing, and it starts bending, and its torsion builds up, and its shear builds up, and our patients come in, and they say, hey, hey, Russ, man, this sucks, man, I don't feel good, okay, and some of them come in in a place where they said, I don't feel good to somebody else 10 years ago, and they have bigger issues, because the human body energetically keeps breaking down, so we have this postural system that actually looks at this and measures it, and it measures the bottom structure, the pelvis, the spine, and the weight, and it measures the shoulders, the neck, and the head, and their functional relationships turn back. So the pelvis, spine, and weight go off, shoulders, neck, and head turn the opposite way. And then in the middle of this postural expression, we have what is how the body feels and how the physical self and the energetic self meet. And that is a way that it feels gravity and the way that it collapses over time because it can't support itself. And those are two things. One is the weight of the human body. So 12 pounds is 12 pounds means the exertion on that system is 12 pounds off center, okay? So that's the way it feels it. So, you know, now I look at the way um, I look at in that postural listing, and we're not, this is not the conversation, but I'd like to do about 15 minutes just to get going before we pop into to, to where we're at to get some philosophy, is I look at that postural expression and I realize where the weaknesses are. I try to help the body restore those weaknesses so that it can do a few things. It can decompress, meaning it could reduce its collapse, and that's an expression of energy. So when the body untwists and this torsion comes out, the body basically says to you, and I, this is what I tell my patients when their rotation is reducing, your body is starting to say that it can carry the load. I have an X amount suitcase and I'm able to walk with it. Okay. And when you start getting to large rotations, I tell people that's when you have to start putting it down. And then when you have huge rotations, that's when you're laying down. Okay. So this bending in his expression of the energy, all right? So now we have this structural conversation. We have a neurologic conversation up top. And it's, I know, I'm, you know, if you've been on for the first time, that's, that's, that's big conversation. And then we have an energetic expression of how the body is handling that. 
And that to me is what chiropractic is about because we have a global view that expresses structure, function, energy, time. Okay, and our goal is to sustain it. Okay. okay. So how do we do that? Okay. So, you know, we have some things that we look at. And what we look at is what is short. Okay. And short means what's fallen down to the floor. So we look at the pelvis, we look at the spine, we look at the shoulders, we look at the neck, we look at the head. Okay. And they tilt and they bend. Okay. And if they tilt and they bend, the side that they tilt and they bend to is falling down. So we want to try to restore that. We want to try to restore that in a way and in a sequence that um, helps it get its head above water as fast as possible. And that's an expression that we call, I open it. So because the human body is in tensegrity, meaning it's a tension system like a balloon and like a spring, then we can use that potential to allow it to push itself out of that. And that's an expression of what we want to do in that compression that I told you about. So we want to open this thing up, okay? And what I found is, and what I used to do is I used to push it to center. What I have found is that it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't need to be pushed. It needs to be released. And that is the difference between releasing the tension and pushing it to where it needs to be. Pushing doesn't work. Releasing works. Pushing only works if you're releasing it in the right direction. How's that? Okay. So the way that I see it and the way that I express it to my patients is what I've found is a three-dimensional system that I can understand the relationships. I could see what's falling down and what's short. I see there's tension in it. And because the human body is all the way up to here, or the tension from here to here, and if I'm on this side of the neck, I can feel that tension here because that's where this stuff attaches, okay? Is the top of the rubber band is here, and if it's short, I can feel the tension in that rubber band. And my goal is to release that short tension. So how do I do that? So the first thing that I have to do is I have to make tension. Because if you have a rubber band that is falling down and it's short and it's collapsing and it's loose, I have to lift it up to a place to get it to tension so that I can then go beyond that so that I can release its tension. I like that. So the way that we do that and the way that we initiate that is we start that in patient placement, okay? And we've been doing that in chiropractic and upper cervical work for a long time, you know? So the second part of it is the adjustment, is how do we get this thing in a tension with the patient so that I can take this short tension and isolate it and I can release it then and how can I get it to a place of maximum tension through patient placement that I can overcome that tension? And the art of overcoming that tension is the conversation for tonight. Okay? So any questions so far? No? All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, I give my patients functional work to do because this bag falls down and you need to be able to stretch it back out and support it forever. Okay. It's the support work that they do between chiropractic releases. So if you just look at the way the human body should be, should it be falling forward and falling down and you take your patient and you figure out a way to actually do the opposite of that and create tension in it, then guess what will happen? you will change your corrections tomorrow, okay? So you need to get things to tension, to tension, okay? If you don't get them to tension, you can't release the tension, okay? So all you got to do is think about where somebody should be. Should their shoulders be rolling forward, okay? Should their pelvis be in flexion? Should their pelvis be in extension? How do I get the pelvis in extension if they should be there? Their shoulders supposed to be back. How do I get them there? Okay. What's the tension in the neck? What's the tension in the head? And then how to create the tension that um, follows the path of the human body. So 
this is this is not a pear, by the way, <laughs> even though it looks like one. It's an upside down balloon. Okay. So, you know, I look at the human body as basically, you know, five balloons sitting on top of themselves and expressing themselves in a weight and a twist and a collapse based on the integration of those five balloons. Okay. So um, what I found is that some people need an adjustment on one side and they can be released and opened on one side. That is where the, the body opens up. That's where the body is. Um, and I was telling you this before and I lost track, but you know, like I tell my patients, imagine that you're skating on ice. It's a lovely thought. And they, they fall through the ice, that hole that you fall through. And then the current takes you away from over time is the path that I need to follow back to get you out of that spot. And there's one spot. Okay. And that one spot is where we call open. And that's where the rotation pops completely out. Okay. Completely is, you know, a big word. It's not zero. It's completely. <laughs> okay. So when you pop that rotation out, okay, sometimes you could do that on one side. Sometimes you could do that on two sides. And I always used to wonder why I couldn't do it only on one side. Like there was only one easy button. And the point is, is because there is like a skeletal system inside that impedes you from getting leverage and direct, you know, a, a, a tension to that line that you can overcome it. And you have to be able to go to that side. So that's the difference in a balloon system. If I pushed in to this balloon, no matter where I was in that balloon, everything would come to me equally, three-dimensionally, symmetrically to that as I pushed into this balloon. This stuff would come this way, that stuff would come that way, this stuff that's over here would come this way. At a 360 degree, sphere, it would come to me, not just X, Y, Z, three-dimensionally tying that all together at every layer, by the way. Okay. The human body is not a balloon. It's a liquid from skin all the way down to the central nervous system. All right. So each one of those layers is also pulling from the inside out, not just from the outside in. And it's not just a line. It's not an anatomy train. It's a five balloon system that has a skeleton inside it that we can access because it's a pressurized system. And if we can find those places that we can push in and release what's short and overcome it, we will do the best work on the planet. That's not future tense, by the way. It's continued tense. So I can't have a conversation with you any more about is this anterior or is this posterior, okay? Because there's no such thing, okay? There is only three-dimensional tension and you feel it and you follow it and you overcome it, all right? And you have to be able to do that in a way that there's an art form to it, all right? And it's the most beautiful thing you will have because that connection that you get with the patient when you're overcoming the resistance in their body, it's, it's the best thing I know. It's the best thing I know. I told you, there's only a couple places where I can shut down. It's a blessing. Okay, and I want to be able to share that with you. And I can only do that by touching you too, by the way, especially now. Okay, with, with releasing it. So there's a number of steps to connect. Okay, and we can do this mechanically, A, B, C, D. It ain't going to do it, man. I can't teach you a baseball swing or a golf swing or whatever you do to play the piano, to play any, any instrument. You know, you just have to be able to close your eyes and roll. And most of the time now, I just close my eyes when I get in the groove and I start adjusting people. And I just let my fingers, my piezoform do the walking. So you have to be able to close off everything else. And I cannot stress to you enough that if you don't set your office up in the way that you personally want to set it up, then you will continue to suffer and not be able to connect and get what you want out of this conversation or this technique or what you want in your life. And that is to be able to do 
you know, you know, the best that you can be. And to do that, you have to be able to be yourself. Okay. The best practice management is to be yourself, not to be somebody else. Okay. I don't want you to be me. I want you to find you. Okay. If you can find you and you can connect to that place with some guidelines that we all look at and go, that I can live within those guidelines, then guess what happens? Then you get to connect to the patient, okay? It's through the understanding of the biomechanics that the, you get, get to connect to you because you build confidence in yourself. It's a bullshit story that you tell yourself that you're good at one point, and guess what happens? You start getting good. It's funny how that happens. Maybe you should just tell yourself you're great. Okay, I tell my patients they're freaking great and they are, can heal themselves and they're powerful inside. Best thing, man, just check into that place that we talk about in chiropractic. You check in there, okay? It's not, <laughs> it's not an algorithm. You have to be able to connect to the tension, okay? The only thing that I give you in the beginning is where that tension is and you know, these concepts have open, and you're going to have to go find it. You've got to be able to hit that ball. Okay, so you connect to yourself. You find your place where you have ultimate peace. And then what happens is you get to connect to the patient, okay? And when you connect to the patient, you feel tension. And guess where it is? It binds up around the, the processes. And you follow that tension until it binds up even more. And guess what happens at the end of that tension and your body mass is against it? It shows itself very localized. And you get your put your pisiform against it and roll through it, okay, with what I call push-pull, okay? And it's just a drop through it, okay? But you got to be able to follow that path. And you can't follow the path, okay, if you got an office that is set up that you can't disconnect and be inside and be free, okay? So that's really what this conversation is gonna be about, even though I'm gonna give you some things that I wanna tell you that I think are important that help me connect as well as possibly mechanically, okay? So one of the biggest things is um, I used to disconnect, and I'm not talking just at an energetic level, okay? I'm talking at a physical level. You can't get to an energetic level of connecting to somebody if you can't connect to them physically, okay? Because physically, if you're not connected and, they're not, you know, and you can't connect to them, that's the lowest level, okay? Physical connection is the lowest level. The bat hits the ball, okay? It's an inanimate object. It's low level, okay? That's not what chiropractic is about, at least not for me. At least that's what I found to find out, Okay? So you can't disconnect structurally. So what I found is one of the places that I used to disconnect the most is in my arms. I would lead with my contact arm. And I found, okay, that I keep my shoulder in and I lock my contact arm in, okay, and it does a whole lot better for me. So that's one piece. The second piece is what I have listed here. And that is, I used to adjust with my arms, and that's probably why I disconnected with my arms. I used to disconnect with a tricep pull with both my shoulders, and my body would basically go in the opposite direction. That's not what I do now. I do a baseball swing that swings the whole body through, okay? And because I don't adjust with my arms anymore, I'm not fatigued, okay? I have... Um, <laughs> You know, one day you should see the size of my wrist on the, the hand that I adjust with my right hand compared to the other and the callus that's on it from the 20 years of, of brutality that I put through it of me trying to drive through thing and disconnect it. Okay. And I realized that there was my pelvic engine and that my pelvic engine, which is my mass, needs to move. Okay. So, you know, I also try to teach my patients also to get that to move in front of them as well, because that's where our mass is. And most people are walking around with their chins leading forward. Okay. And their pelvic engine is, you know, it's like walking on your hands versus your feet, you know, so it's, it's a tough place. So the pelvic engine in your mass is really important to drive through this thing. Okay. Okay. So. One of the things that I do is I get my feet set, 
okay? And that hip explosion is a baseball term where you push your mass through this thing. And I stay connected, meaning my body just starts moving through this thing. And I do this in the morning, okay? And before I go ahead and do this, okay, I get set for probably about 15, 20 minutes with whatever I do in my ritual of stretching and motion and connecting and getting loose because I cannot walk into the office at 7.59 and adjust the patient at 8 o'clock. There's just no way. No way. I have to get ready mentally. I have to get ready physically. And we'll talk about that at the conference. But once I'm set here, okay, once I'm set here, I should be pretty loose and ready to go because I've gone through this, okay? And what I start doing is, you know, it's kind of like being on the driving range. You're hitting some balls. So I could do whatever I'm doing in my office, you know, but touching somebody's neck, okay, and feeling something is different than having the ball on the tee and a fairway in front of you, okay? So you got to connect to that. So you got to just get your foot down and you got to get your hips moving and you got to get connected. I used, to, I used to feel like I had to get it done like in a minute. And I needed to start connecting right away. And, you know, one day I stopped, I stopped suffering and I said, you know, I'm just not going to do this to myself anymore. Okay, I'll, I'll be ready when I'm ready, you know. So I just chill and I just start chilling out and I just start touching. Okay, and I loosen up. You know, just start getting my body together, start touching them and just start noticing what's there and what's not there. And all of a sudden when you do that, when you're relaxed in your heart, guess what happens? I shouldn't say relaxed in your heart. I should say relaxed in your mind. When your mind is out of the picture, then guess what happens? You know, the Pisa form just shows up and it becomes a, to me, a sixth sense that I see with and I feel with and I notice with. Okay. So the mass of the body just starts moving forward and the contact arm just stays right in, locked in there. Okay. And you got to stay connected. So you start moving forward. If you feel your shoulder come forward, if you feel your contact arm come forward before you are where you need to be, then guess what happens? You've already disconnected. Okay. It's like if you have a baseball swing and you bring the foot forward after, okay, you swing. It just doesn't work. You have to have the foot moving at the same time as the swing. Okay. So the feet, the knees, the pelvis, the spine, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the neck, the head move as one. And that's so important. There's no separation. And when you have no separation, your body is now very possible, powerful, and you don't have to use any force. I used to force all the time. I play music now. I'm serious. I tell people I got 14 keys on every side, seven spinuses and seven TPs. And I just go and I play. And everybody's got a different song. But you know what? Everybody's got the same notes. And I just know where they are. You know why? Because I go put my hand on it and I know what tension feels like. Because I can connect to that. Okay? Because I understand that the human body is a three-dimensional system. So this concept of staying short, okay, and I don't mean your tension, okay, but that those arms have to stay short. And in this picture, I'm reaching out. You see that? I'm long. In this one here, I'm short. And it's this right here that keeps me connected when I lock this sh shoulder in. And it's not forceful. It's comfortable. But I feel it, and I have to notice it sometimes because I have a bad habit. So if you notice something, guess what happens? It's a distraction from your connection. So notice and notice, and then just start connecting. And before you'll know it, you won't need to notice and you'll start connecting, okay? But you have to be able to notice a couple things. You have to notice your pisiform, you have to notice your pelvis, you have to notice your contact arm, you have to notice that you're moving as a unit, you have to notice, okay? But you can't be bogged down with it. Otherwise, you can't play. You're not free. Okay? And you can't have doctor connect. You'll have doctor disconnect. Any questions? 
so the arms stay short, and the pelvic mass leans in. It just drives in. I used to drive a lot with my legs from my, you know, I only adjust with my uh, right hand. So, um, and, and I'll tell you what, if you're, you, you, you have to adjust, I'm telling you 100% of the time, you have to, <laughs> I, I don't want to sound like that, but <laughs> you have to adjust 100% of the time with your inferior hands. You have to be inferior, okay? And you will be best if you lead with your superior leg, meaning your left leg. So I adjust best. Try to get this back here, sorry. Right here, okay? My le left leg is bent and forward. My right leg is back. My right arm is what I contact with. Okay, and the reason for that is because the transfer of weight when you make a release moves from the back of your pelvis on this side to the front of your pelvis on that side. Okay, so to do that, you have to be able to go from this weight, which is the back leg, as you lean in to the front leg and anterior. So you need an inferior hand, you need a, a um, back leg that's on the same as your contact and you need to lead with the knee and the mass that's on the opposite side so you can swing th through because you're always coming inferior to superior except at the at the skull okay so you keep that arm locked in and you lean in okay and guess what happens okay you're you come in and you're hand is up, you're in extension, you have radial deviation, okay? So you're coming in with that pisiform. That thumb is pushing against the forearm, okay? So you're up, and I feel like it's a flashlight. That's what I feel like. I feel like my pisiform is leading the charge. It is the most forward thing on my hand. Okay, and you just need to practice that personally. You can't overcome the resistance and go and hit baseballs if you can't do these two steps. And you need to be kind to yourself. Your patients, I want to tell you something. Your patients don't know whether you're breaking resistance or not or setting up or hitting a ball in the woods or hitting it in the sand trap or just taking a couple practice shots. They don't know the difference. So you can take all the time you want. You can get connected, you can expose the pisiform, and you can cut yourself all the slack because all the pressure of what you think they're thinking, that you're not making it happen, it ain't so. That's a message from your sponsor. Okay. So, tell my patients be kind to themselves and their path to wellness. Be kind to yourself and your path to connectivity, okay? Because you already found out beating yourself up and trying to add another quarter degree or an eighth of a degree where you got the wrong X, Y, Z over P, R, S, T. And guess what? That's not where we're about. That's the other model. That's the other model that says we're a machine, okay? So the pisiform sees, it feels, and it hooks, and it makes the best connection, okay? I tell my patients I'm no longer on dial-up. I'm on direct connect as I bust through it. So I use my pisiform in two different ways, okay? So with the thumb up, this is one way that I grab because this can sweep through, okay? So if you take your pisiform and if you take your hand and you just put it out for a moment and sweep it to the inside, sweep it to yourself, you'll see that if you grab that tension on the top of it, you carry it through. You got me? There's another way, which is this one and this one is where the pisiform, your hand is in extension, and it's driving straight at it. 
Okay, it's like your fingers are pointing straight up in the air. Okay, the other one is more of a, this one is a knife edge sweeping through. So there's two ways to get pisiform contacts. Okay, and they release different things and they give you different motions. We'll talk about that at the conference. Okay, but these are two connects right here. Go check them out. Go put your pisiform up to it. Okay. Okay, but what happens is, is this thing right here, and all tension is three-dimensional. So as you start feeling things, you'll start feeling tension, and what you'll start doing is you're going to start following that path. So if you can connect to yourself, and you can then connect to some tension, and you can start leaning in and not disconnect with your contact arm, and you can expose that pisiform, and you can totally quiet your mind and feel that pisiform leading the charge, then you will start leaning forward and start feeling tension. And you will start moving in and you'll start noticing that the tension has a path. And that path, as you lean in, can just you'll just follow it along. It'll carry you just like a current. And guess what? Everybody's got the same path. Because guess what? The, I, you know, I noticed something in fourth quarter dissection. You know that vagus nerve was in the same place on every single person? It's the coolest thing. I remember that all the time. It's one of those things. I said, look at that freaking vagus nerve, man. It's in every single patient. It's all the same. And guess what? Tension and paths are all the same for everybody. Okay? Some people need or 14 keys. Some people you need two or three keys. Some people you need two or three keys, but you got to play them over and over and over. Okay? Some people, you need 14 keys, and you just keep going, and you never get done. Okay? Don't matter. You just go play. And when you can literally let yourself play that way, you'll start getting a rhythm, and you'll start noticing other things. Okay? And you'll begin to have bigger awarenesses that it's not just a youth with your arm stretched out, that there's actually a little P in your hand that grabs tension and leans in and you just slowly follow it through and sink in. And then you, my eyes are closed right now. And you just feel the tension and it binds up and you just let it go. Okay. And that is a bigger awareness of maybe where some of you are today. And some of you have that and you have that when you go, oh, I'm on. And you could just get on. Because you're the ones that get yourself out of on, okay? By having the junk, whatever you're doing in your life, you know, bugging you. Okay, so you feel this tension and this direction. And as you come into this thing, what I noticed at the bottom of it, because I do this very methodically now. I used to go grinding through and taking it home, okay? I drop into it and follow it. And guess what happens? The, mat, the tension balls up. It gets like a little BB. It shows itself because that's its final place where it's going to hold on to itself. And you can set your pisiform right against that P because you feel it. And you feel that you just need to just extend your wrist a little here. Turn this way just a little there. Lean a little bit there. And guess what will happen? All of a sudden, they're like together as one at, at full place, and you just, just push, pull through it. You just pull through it at the end of it, everything at the complete end, okay? So your arm doesn't move until you're at the end of the end of the end of the path that you can stop and sit there, smoke a cigarette with your patient, and then put it out, okay, and then uh, push-pull and wrist uh, uh, lever, and pow, out it goes. Because you were just leaning against that little BB. You can do that. How do I know? Because I can do that, okay? I can't do that all the time because people are all messed up, man. And you can't get that exposure because... I tell them, you know, the freaking extension cord so freaking wound up today, I got half of it done. It's not my issue.
Okay. So then you start at this stable place, inferior hand, back leg, locked in, contact arm back, hand in extension, and you start rocking forward, getting connected yourself. You connect to the patient. You start feeling around. You go, oh, there's a little something there. And you start leaning into it and start pulling it. And it's just not happy right away. Some of them just, you just go, wow, there that is. And some of them, <laughs> you know, you're going to work 10 minutes before you find something that you want. Okay, maybe. Or you'll never find something. Okay. You'll start working in there and you'll start seeing things that show up and you start leaning in, locked in following the path to the end, and you'll feel that binding, and then you'll release it. And my inferior hand always moves through it and up, okay? So I'm either going to come in with extension straight at it, or I'm going to come into that end tension, okay, and then sweep it up with the pisiform because I've got it right up on that side of my hand, you know? It's running kind of parallel to my thumb, and I grab it and sweep through it. I do that all the way up the TP, C7, C6, C5, C4, C3, C2, C1, I can count, and pow, and just lever that C1 just against the skull and just bend everything out. It's one of my last moves. Bam, bam, bam. It's like Elton John sweeping through the keys. Unfortunately, sometimes you gotta go on for an encore because you don't like what you see on the posture IQ. <laughs> Okay. So, any questions? Okay. So, okay. So, this is so amazing, man. You know, it's there's there's eight nine people on here, man. This is just the coolest conversation for me. It should be like, I guess eight nine people on, huh? Because that's what's supposed to be perfect here. But, you know, in chiropractic, I pushed on a bone, I pushed on a heat spot, I pushed on a process. I pushed on a spasm. I pushed on a bone because I thought it was connected to all the other bones, which it is. Okay. And my goal was always to do something that I don't at all consider today. Okay. What I consider today from what I used to consider is just on the different of the planet. And that is I used to just want to go and move a one area from point A to point B and measure it and leave and not have any relationship with it, okay? Then I got to a place even in QSM3 where my goal was to feel the tension and just go pop, 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 pop through it. That's not what I do today. What I do today is I feel tension statically, okay? Pop, 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 which we're gonna talk about in just a moment. And then I also feel tension that restores people dynamically. So people move. So my goal is not to take the cast off, okay? It's to get full range of motion, okay? And you, to be able to do that, you have to be careful because you have to start moving people in their range of motion, okay? And if things are sore to the static motion and you push them through that, through, through that in the wrong direction, you hurt people. You've heard me talk about this. I've lost three patients doing this. Okay, and I'm grateful for those three people for sacrificing themselves for me so that I can have this conversation with you and help my patients at a level beyond where I've been, my experience. And that is how do I restore that dynamic motion in the human body? And that dynamic motion starts with restoring the frontal plane and lifting it up. I should say it, lifting it up, integrating it, getting these pieces together, restoring it towards center. And then the final thing is to restore the sagittal plane and restoring dural motion. And I can do that to some extent on everybody. <laughs> okay. And that's cool. And I could feel that. I could feel the releases. I feel the tension release, you know, and if I'm at a certain place and I know that that's releasing, I know what that is. Okay. And I want to make sure I can share that with you. I'm not doing this forever. 
Okay. So we push pull through these things and we release tension. That's what we do. And you have to be able to close your eyes and feel that tension. I cannot tell you to just get your motion going, start feeling stuff and close your eyes and make sure that the patient isn't talking to you and you're not talking to them. And that if you want the light down, I've got a room that's most of my office is basically natural lit. I keep it dark. I got music playing. My dogs are in, you know, the, you know, the scoop with me. Okay. It's the best thing going. Okay. You take care of you. The people that want to have that happen will show up for you because they resonate in the same place. Okay. That's a cool thing. If you're struggling in your office, it's because you're attracting people that you're not resonating with because you're trying to be something that you're not. That is the only reason why you are not being successful to the degree that you may want to be. Should make a Q Foundation donation for that. That's what I think. What do you think, Dr. Paulsonelli? He's talking, man. All right, I'll talk. Okay, so imagine. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> That's so, the first. I yeah, never heard I, you say I, that. What's that? <laughs> I muted myself. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so I totally, I totally agree. You know, like. Uh, um, I've been feeling lately in my practice, I've been just coming into my own, feeling comfort with what I'm doing, who I am, how I present myself, and I don't care. Um, um, you know, and I'm just attracting people, and I'm busy, you know. And it's well, you do care, nice. but you care about yourself, too. That's it. You right. do care. Yes, yes, it's yes. not you don't I'm care. Not, I don't wanna, it's not that I don't care. It's not that I, it's that I don't want to sacrifice sure. myself in being myself, being truthful to myself, truthful to who I am uh, with my patients. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, let me, I just want to take like a two minute break here. I want to tell you something that, you know, um, I've done um, really no practice management stuff, and uh, but I've had some help from some friends of some things because, you know, I've reached out to people because, you know, you know, everybody is not where they want to be when they're there. And, so, you know, the pursuit for me has been to realize that nothing works for me except me doing what I do and touching people and have them tell others. That's my office. And why is that good for me? Because that's me, okay? So if you are you, you'll just do your thing and whatever, whatever, whatever that is. But I um, started – creating relationships with my patients at a different level when I got over my fear of not being able to help them or just giving them the sales pitch of me helping them. I just started talking to them. And guess mm -hmm. what happens? People just started just doing care plans, you know, easy. It's just not even a conversation. I don't even take out a piece of paper anymore, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, go through like this and this and this. I don't do that. Why? Because it just don't work for me. It's not who I am. So, um, you know, I, I cannot, tell you enough that if you do what you want to do this what we're doing here adjusting shows up okay because you're yourself and you're free of all stress because you're not in a place that doesn't resonate with you i cannot sh stress that enough i could talk to you about this but you you won't feel it to the extent that you may want to um and i can't speak to that you know i can only speak from my own experience but my experience is free yourself and free yourself, okay? So free yourself up. Okay, so that being said, that's a commercial break. Okay, so we've got just a few more minutes here. Um, there's, there's a couple different types of things. So imagine that you're at a TP. Well, see, this is a line here, and we're pushing against that tension. And you could see, like, you know, it, you, you'll feel tension here. It's tight, right? And if you pushed on this side, okay, okay? On the right side of the screen to the left, you will feel the same tension. So you feel that. The thing is, and this is what you need to hear, it's not a lever. It's a, there are three-dimensional attachments to everything. Everything. So you have to test and check three-dimensionally. Butt up against this thing and stop and feel it and find out where it is and which way it wants to go. Okay, follow it. And where do you want to follow? Go to the biggest stabilizers, the big guys. Okay, 
So you can lock on these processes and bend them. That's what I call them. I bend them. I bend them forward, okay? If I'm behind a patient because I only use my inferior hand and, and I'm not going to go on the other side because I don't adjust with that other hand, okay, and I need to feel tension coming back at me, well, I come in and I do like this swing motion with my pisiform and I test the tension. I test tension. I test it everywhere. It's, it's simple, Okay? But I'm telling you, you got to get set to yourself, set to the patient, set to your pies form, allow it to lead, fall in, allow that mask to follow. Okay? And you'll feel the path, and it can't go no more. It's the guitar string is as tight as it goes. You know what that feels like. You know what that feels like. Go take a rubber band. Okay? Have somebody hold it with their two hands and put it against it with a pies form, and you'll know where it's going to go pretty darn close to where it's going to go before it's going to go snap in your face because you'll start squinting your eyes. <laughs> okay? Well, this one's not going to come flying out at you, so you don't have to squint your eyes, but you'll have the same experience. Okay? Yeah, just pay attention to your own body. Your inner wisdom will knows a lot before your brain knows, okay? So I come into these things, and I check these major points, Okay? And I check these majors and I bend them all over the place. All this static stuff, pop, 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 lean and pop, lean and drop, lean and drop, lean and drop, lean and drop. Okay. I just keep coming in. All right. And this is that hook that I, I do. I come in and I come with my pisa form and it swings around and it you know, comes in here and it does just a swing motion and I pull it off and then I pull it back and around in a curve that would come like that. It's out of motion. In, grabbing, pulling, and releasing. Obviously, it's part because I don't have any sharp pays. Okay, giving you the idea. So you got 14 keys. Okay. We got a little more than that. There's, some, there's another section behind, besides the piano section. Okay, it's the percussion section. Section, and that's this section up here with all this fascial. Excuse me, all this. Uh, um, tentorium stuff back in there, the triangles in there, and snapping and releasing all that saran wrap in there. That's the that's the percussion section in there. The mastoid over into that triangle. So go feel those places. Okay, you'll feel it, and as you move through it, you feel tension, and slowly move, you'll feel it bind up. Okay, and you always follow that path of synergy. And everybody's got the same path because everybody's got the same bone structure because the vagus nerve is in the same place as the vagus nerve on everybody. Okay? And this is what I say. I close my eyes. And I don't care if the head was here or the head was there, or however you're going to look at this. But these, this is a stadium seating. And what I do is I just start putting my hand in there. And imagine every one of these little places gets to be bent. Okay, some of the seats are up and some of the seats are down, and you have to put all all the seats up. Can you do that? Sure, you do that. You can do that with your eyes closed. Okay, so I'm going to give you another piece, and uh, it's kind of cool because this is a full circle conversation because. Uh, the head is a really huge lever, okay? And I used to um, use the atlas, this point here, as a lever, and I see the efficacy of it for sure, okay, because I use it all the time, okay? Now, I play down here, and I bend and roll, and I get static and dynamic stuff out because I restore three-dimensional motion at C5. I restore C2, three-dimensional dural motion there, and that's not a static thing. That's dynamic, okay? But I also restore dynamic motion by using the head and rolling it. And this head rolls three-dimensionally up, down, forward, backward, 360 degrees. And I can take a marble, okay, called my pisiform, and roll on it and change the direction of the way this thing bends. 
Now, imagine when this thing bends over this way, what it does to the tension here, okay? Now, you know about crowbars, okay? But let me tell you, a rolling ball is a lot more power than a crowbar. It's called angular momentum, not torque. Angular momentum, um, I may be mistaken, so don't quote me, but I believe it's larger, okay? Because it moves around a, an arc, okay? So you get leverage from that as well. It moves three-dimensionally. So as you come in here, you can pull tension from the other side, from this side, by the way that you roll through the percussion section. Because that place bends. You see it bend at C5. You bend at C5. You basically pull equally this way and equally the other way. Because C5 is kind of the middle ground of both places. That's why it's C5. It's the middle attachment between the structure and the neurology. So if you want, if you want to affect more of the other stuff, Side, you stay above C5 on this side and you start playing here and you'll bend the head and it'll drop more this way, okay, because you have more leverage into the, that percussion section. So I drop into these points here and allow the head, the cantilever up, stretching three-dimensionally here. I don't do that linear, my friends. I roll, okay, my pisiform three-dimensionally. So my pisiform is the black, the star is the motion that I have. And I roll that pisiform between here and there, okay? Here's the neck, so I roll it through this place in that fascial zone there three-dimensionally. And sometimes when I can't get stuff at C5, I can release it at its insertion above versus its origin below for the neck, and I can get some tensions out that I haven't gotten out before. And then I go back here and I release the middle. So my end game is to be a, my beginning game is to get myself connected, get connected to, to the patient, follow the path, exposing the pisiform to the end bundle to release it statically on the TPs, on the SPs that I could start then moving in and create motion at those places. And then once I start creating motion, off I go and I start leaning in, and I do that create motion by changing the headpiece support. I have all my patients have their ear below the headpiece support. And the reason I do that is because if I increase the span from the support to the shoulder, I increase the flexibility. The longer the span, the bigger the flexibility. Yes, of course. You know those little short necks? You can't even get your hand in there. Get those nice long necks, man, you're pushing through it, man, I can't even get that thing to tension. Well, you got to get that thing to tension before you could even release it. I get people in some crazy positions. Some of these young girls, you know, they're like 14, 16, okay, or 12. Man, they're like freaking, you know, their, their chin is like, you know, sticking up in the air, okay? The back of their head is touching their rear end. I got their shoulder bent all the way back, okay, so that I can increase tension so that I can restore the sagittal curve and restore three-dimensional motion. Okay? But take your time and slow down and don't get to that place too fast. Okay? Get to the first place because you can't get to this place before you get to those other places. Okay? Okay. So this is a concept of rolling. Okay? And it creates a three-dimensional motion. And I roll my pisiform even at C5. I roll it through. I just follow the path and roll. Okay? And restoring that dynamic motion. Because after I'm done with all the TPs and the spinuses, I just go to restore motion. That's fascial. I don't need the transverse processes and the spinuses anymore. I've released them to a static place where they are upright. What I now want to do now is restore three-dimensional motion. And that is the place where I see the most significant changes in my patients. Patients sitting upright. Okay, so those are the things that we'll continue to discuss and we'll hopefully we'll continue to show. Um, just a couple uh, things before I talk to you about this, uh, this, this slide is that um, we put a, uh, I, I, I'm, I've, this is a small group here tonight, but uh, I want to tell you, um, I come from a place 
of uh, just like all of us of, you know, we learn from our predecessors. And, you know, I, t I tell my patients, I've learned what not to do more than I've learned what to do. All right. So that being said, I've also learned what not to do as a um, president and an innovator of an organization and um, in a ways to hopefully teach better um, and to have different relationships with each of you um, in a way that um, is supports you. So um, to do that, um, we have a website that is inclusive. Okay, so 2018, and it's up. It went up yesterday, but uh, we will not have membership anymore because you don't have to pay to be a QSM3 member. That's what everybody else does. Okay, um, I shouldn't say that. That's what everybody else does, but that's where I came from. So um, that that that's not where I want to be. I'm, I want to have an organization based on um, that uh, you get to once a month come to a group and we get to chat about stuff and I can speak. If you have questions, you're welcome to to be able to have a Facebook forum that I'm on every single day trying to give you something, okay? So I, and, and writing this web, I'm prepared for it, okay? Um, so we have a locator that supports you also as, as well. So I'm gonna try to support you as much as I can. And if you need to speak with me and you wanna talk about this, um, I find I find this stuff to be um, highly profound in our profession, and um, I, I think it's important for me to try to help you as much as possible to be able to connect to um, what I feel is um, an amazing place um, for our profession and for us personally. So um, to do that, okay, the really the important thing is, is that you can't break, you know, that should be someone else's resistance until you break your own. I guess I'd wait till the last slide, Dr. Paulson, I to give you a uh, typo. Okay. And the person that once told me that was one of my mentors. And he told me that, and I, and I understand that. Okay. So, you know, we get these messages, our patients get migraines, they get a little headache, you know, they don't just walk in usually where I just had one the first time today. So we hear these messages and this is the message again okay okay if you want to feel tension okay you got to be able to have be free of tension so work on that okay my wife told me a long time ago honey you got to stop doing and you got to start undoing so i've been undoing what i was doing for a long time and i'm done okay i try not to do i just try to undo what is in me and what is in them okay and when you're able to get to that place um i think you'll find uh the same happiness that i do okay so we have any questions very good i appreciate all of you anybody i have a question too fast yes sir your, when you're adjusting your superior hand, is your superior hand kind of bent when it's locked into the push and pull, or is it straight? Okay, do you want me to tell you what my elbow is or your elbow? Um, well, my elbow, when I just did it, when it's locked in the glenoid, it's kind of bent. Okay, so how, how's that? Is it okay? All right, thank you for the answer. Hold on, are you, are you comfortable? Do you feel like you're able to, you feel like your arms are, you feel like you're connected, but not too tight? Oh, uh, well, I've never, place. I've never adjusted with it locked in the thing, so I'll tell you tomorrow. I'm just after asking I... you right now, right now, just just lock into it, easy. Don't make it too tight. You make it too tight, that's force. Make it just enough that you feel it, and then just pull in a little more because I want you to own it, so that you can have some cheat room because you're going to cheat and you're going to break it. So I want you to just lock that contact arm just a hair more so you notice. That's why I said I want you to notice, because at some point you shouldn't notice because it should just be there, and is is not noticed. Something that is tension is noticed. I got you. Okay. It's not about me. It's about you. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, Russell? Yeah. Um. Have you had more evolution in the patient placement to bring bring the patient to max tension before you get in there? Yeah, I uh, I 
Well, you know, I can, I can, I get, I can put, I put people into tension 95% of the time. Um, it's, it's, I, what I do is I bring the, I haven't bend their knees and I just pull their knees back. Okay. And most, a lot of people just do that already for me. Most people just bend their knees and it's enough for me. Okay. I like to put some arch in their middle of their back, Andy. I take my hand and push it in their middle of their back. I also bring their, I get them their, their inferior shoulder, the shoulder they're laying on and make sure they're on it, not in front of them. Okay. Because then they're breaking down. Right. So you got to get them on the shoulder and then you've got to get that place right in the middle between their scapula to push forward. So what I do is I usually hold their head a bit and I push that between the scapula forward and it drives their chin up. Okay. And that's the place where you'll feel it lock after you do the legs. Mm -hmm. And when you get it there, you'll say, hold it there. And then you'll say, okay, now relax, which means don't let them let it go but you're going to have to take it the rest of the way because you don't want them to hold. You never want your patient to hold that position because that is locking them down. You don't want them to lock them down. You want to take them through all the way to the end of tension, which means you need to flow with them. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I hope it's been uh, successful tonight. It feels good to me. Gave you a lot of uh, really great things to think about, things that I think about, and things that we'll continue to think about. Okay? Anyone else? All right. All right. Happy New Year to everybody. It's the night that God blew breath into man, and hopefully uh, come Monday we will get to uh, allow people to breathe a little bit better too. All right. All have a nice evening. Yours are happy, happy New Year. Happy.